Stars collide and a Jewish rabbi sees prophecy fulfilled. Syria threatens retaliation for an Israeli missile strike. And President Obama ratchets up tension with Russia in his last week in office. It's Skywatch TV for Monday, January 16th, 2017. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, the Paris Conference on Dividing Israel sends Donald Trump a warning. 70 nations met in Paris Sunday to discuss a two-state solution to the Palestinian problem. The conference organized by France will send a warning uh, to the incoming president saying that only the two-state solution can solve the Palestinian crisis. The Israeli commentators were not alarmed. They called the results of the one-day conference lackluster, said nothing significant was done or achieved against Israel, uh, such as, for example, officially recognizing a Palestinian state. Now, having said that, the presence of 70 nations is significant. As I mentioned last week, in my view, this is not a coincidence. After the Tower of Babel incident, when God divided the nations, gave them their inheritance, he set the borders of the nations according to the number of the sons of God. People at Babel declared that they didn't want to serve God directly, so he said, okay, fine, you deal with my subordinates, lesser Elohim, sons of God, B'nai Elohim, who then set themselves up as, as gods in their own right and demanded worship. That led to the Divine Council Conference in Psalm 82, where God says, though you are gods, all of you, sons of the Most High, you will die like men. That's their punishment. There's a day coming when the gods will die. Now, why 70 nations? They, of course, you know, Israel didn't exist at that time. That's 71. And of course, Palestine as a nation has never existed. Again, not a coincidence that the number of nations at this conference matches the number of nations listed in the table of nations, Genesis 10, which immediately followed the Tower of Babel. Now, having said that, Mahmoud Abbas, pretending that he's president of an actual nation, was at the Vatican last week to establish the Palestinian, well, embassy, because the Vatican has, in fact, recognized Palestine as a de facto nation. And a spokesman for President Abbas said, moving the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the U.S. embassy to Israel, would quote, open the gates of hell, end quote. But Pope Francis, two years ago, called President Abbas an angel of peace. The outgoing director of the CIA had some harsh words for incoming President Trump on Sunday. Appearing on Fox News Sunday, John Brennan questioned the wisdom of Donald Trump sharing his thoughts with the world via Twitter, suggesting it could have an impact on national security and hinting that Trump doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to foreign policy. Trump replied, as you might expect, through Twitter, pointing out that uh, on Brennan's watch, Syria and Ukraine in particular have been disasters, and then asking if Brennan was the one who leaked that fake news report, allegedly from Russia, linking Trump to a rather disgusting incident in a Moscow hotel. Unsourced, unverified, untrue, fake news. This begs the question, is the intelligence community in the United States trying to derail the Trump presidency before it even begins? Trying to hamstring him so they can continue their long running Cold War against Russia? I mean, let's face it, their reason to be, their raison d'etre, is to confront the old enemy. If relationships between Washington and Moscow warm up, many of the guys who are being paid by the intelligence community suddenly would have no reason, <laughs> there'd be no reason for their jobs any longer. So are they so desperate to keep tensions high between Moscow and Washington that they would try to derail the president that they are supposed to serve? And if so, how far would they go? Time for us to take seriously the biblical command to pray for our leaders in government. Well, speaking of fake news, the Washington Post caught in another story. On Friday, they reported that Trump fired the commander of the D.C. National Guard, General Errol Schwartz. Now, this is an important post because the commander of the D.C. Guard heads up the military presence during the inaugurational ceremony. The inauguration coming up this Friday, of course. Um, According to the Post, 
General Schwartz's termination took place during the oath of office ceremony. In other words, he could see the troops out of the armory, but he wouldn't be there when they came back. Well, the Post quietly changed the story in Sunday's edition. The fact is the commander of the D.C. National Guard traditionally submits a letter of resignation to every new president about to take office. That gives the president the option to accept or decline the letter of resignation. In this case, incoming President Trump decided to accept the resignation of the commander of the D.C. Guard. However, what the Post didn't report was that the Trump transition team asked General Schwartz to stay on through the inauguration so as to facilitate a smooth transition to make sure that the National Guard troops there to keep security during the inauguration didn't have to change commanding officers in the middle of the ceremony. General Schwartz decided to quit. And then he went to the press to tell his story in the Post, eager to make President Trump, President-elect Trump, look like a fool who doesn't know what he's doing, ran with the story before they had the facts. Fake news. The United States posting troops to Russia's western border on a permanent basis for the very first time. American troops rolled into Poland Thursday, something the Poles have wanted since the Soviet Union collapsed in 1989. The question is why President Obama ordered this now, a week before he leaves office. And you might remember that during the presidential campaign in 2012, President Obama mocked Mitt Romney for calling Russia a threat to our national security. Now, for the record, I agree with Mr. Romney. I have no illusions about where Vladimir Putin's loyalties lie. But provoking Russia unnecessarily is flat stupid. And doing it a week before his successor takes his place could be interpreted as President Obama doing something he doesn't have to finish. In other words, petty and spineless. And proving what many of us suspected all along, the Clinton Foundation is shutting down the Clinton Global Initiative. This basically confirms that the only reason wealthy donors and foreign governments were giving money to the Clinton Foundation and the CGI was to buy access to Bill and Hillary. Now that Hillary's not going to be president, donors are closing their checkbooks and 22 people will soon be out of work. Coming up, Syria warns Israel of payback for an airstrike near Damascus. That's straight ahead on Skywatch TV. Recently, Skywatch TV held a No Fences Tell Your Story writing contest. After hundreds of writers submitted their inspirational stories, 10 Skywatch TV judges worked together to narrow it down to 10 beautifully told accounts in the brand new anthology, Learning to Lean. Right now, when you purchase Learning to Lean from the Skywatch TV store for only $19.95, you'll also receive absolutely free, living a supernatural life. Find out how to live in the reality of the supernatural realm, attuned in mind and heart to God's kingdom, coming in power through the Holy Spirit living in you. Plus, we want to help you tell your inspirational stories, so we're also including free a brand new, beautiful spiral-bound personal journal. Put to pen and organize your chapters, thoughts, and outlines, or use as the perfect Bible devotion companion for jotting down your favorite scripture verses. Altogether, this Learning to Lean Anthology special offer holds a retail value of $55. Now for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling at skywatchtvstore.com. Be inspired as you learn to lean on God's miraculous grace at work in our lives today with the Learning to Lean Anthology special offer. Syria blamed Israel Friday for a rocket strike near a military airport west of Damascus. It's warned the Israeli government of repercussions, didn't exactly threaten a military reprisal. The IDF, which doesn't comment on foreign reports of Israeli military activity, has not confirmed the attack. There were no immediate reports of injuries. California's five-year drought has been challenged by recent storms. They've gotten a lot of rain there over the last couple of weeks. The thing is, you don't want to replace all that water that's been missing for five years over the span of a week or two. An 80-foot deep sinkhole opened up in northeast California last week. The 50-foot wide crater 
popping open just behind a car dealership in the town of Grass Valley, California. That's about halfway between Sacramento and Reno, Nevada. Another sinkhole about 15 feet in diameter opened beneath a building a few miles northeast of there in Nevada City. The man who wrote The Exorcist, William Peter Blatty, has died at the age of 89. The author and filmmaker passed away last Thursday in Bethesda, Maryland, of a form of blood cancer. The movie version of the film was uh, arguably, at the time it was released, one of the most frightening things ever put on film. A story loosely based on the exorcism of a boy known only, only as Roland Doe. Uh, he was, uh, went through the procedure at Alexian Brothers Hospital in South St. Louis County. That hospital has since been demolished. Uh, his family lived in a home in North St. Louis County, a community called Belnor, where a television program performed a live exorcism on Halloween night 2015. Frankly, they didn't know what they were doing or the forces they were messing with. The program was pretty boring, but again, the way they went about it was not according to Scripture. But an, an Italian archbishop claims that the phenomenon of uh, demon possession is real. I mean, we, we agree with this. Um, now the Roman Catholic Church has trouble problems with its official doctrine, but at least Roman Catholicism acknowledges the phenomenon is real, that the enemy is real. In an interview to an, an Italian newspaper, Archbishop Ario Castellucci said the experience he faced during his first exorcism in 2014 would convince anyone that the devil is real. As I said, at least the Roman Catholic Church gets that part of its doctrine correct, which is something you can't say about most American Christians. According to the Barna Group, Christian pollster George Barna found that more than half of American Christians do not believe Satan is real, 60%. Sadly, only a third of American Christians believe that the Holy Spirit is real. So say what you will about the Roman Catholic Church. At least they understand we're in a supernatural war against intelligent evil. Now in Japan, well, they exercise fish. And the fish exorcists are running into an issue with animal rights activists. You see, this is a long tradition in Japan where a uh, ceremony in the Shinto religion involves <laughs> feeding alcohol to carp before their return to the river. See, people hoping to um, level up their karma uh, are blessed by a priest. And then rice wine is poured into the carp, which is a sacred fish in Shintoism, and that they're released back into the river. Well, this ceremony, which is performed every January in uh, Toyama Prefecture, was broadcast on television. And animal rights activists got upset. They accused the organizers of animal cruelty. And finally, astronomers say we're going to get a chance to witness a collision of stars in five years. 2022, two stars that have collided. The light, this happened many, many years ago. The light is just now reaching the Earth. Um, it will result in a new star visible in the night sky. But a rabbi in Jerusalem is seeing this as a supernatural sign that the Messiah's appearance is imminent. Now, of course, as Christians, we believe that when Jesus returns, it will be a return and not his first appearance here on earth. Um, rabbi Joseph Berger, who's one of the rabbis in charge of overseeing David's tomb in Jerusalem's old city, says that this new star formed by the collision of two other stars will be a fulfillment of the prophecy of Balaam. He was the prophet hired by the king of Moab during the Exodus. Numbers 24, 17, Balaam was told by God to say, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall be a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. The children of Sheth, children of Seth. Um, my view, that may be a reference to worshipers of the Egyptian god of foreigners and the desert Seth, but that's for another time. Anyway, um, this is a messianic prophecy for sure. You can make a case that it was fulfilled by King David, who certainly smote the corners of Moab. Um, there, there, were a, there were a group of people called the Shutu by the Egyptians who lived around where Moab was in the day. So David may have fulfilled that prophecy. You could say Jesus fulfilled it. You could certainly say when the Messiah returns, he will fulfill it and rule the nations with a rod of iron. But sadly, our Jewish brothers and sisters, those who expect 
the arrival of the Messiah, are looking for a geopolitical savior, a military savior, who will save them during the war of Gog and Magog. And they have found other candidates in the past who they thought fulfilled this prophecy of Balaam. In the year 132 AD, the great rabbi Akiva thought that a man named Simon ben Kosiva was the Messiah. They began to call him Simon bar Kokhba, meaning son of the star, in fulfillment of Numbers 24, 17. The rebellion led by bar Kokhba created an independent Jewish state that lasted for about three years. And they put a real hurt on the Roman legions, basically destroyed one legion that disappeared from the history books. But when the Romans got serious, they left Jerusalem and the surrounding countryside in ruins. They basically depopulated all of the province of Judea, deported all the Jews who were still left alive, essentially um, destroyed any hope of an independent Jewish state for almost 2,000 years. And the nation was, the area was renamed from Judea to Palestine. Thank you, Emperor Hadrian. Now, as Christians, this is tragic because the rabbis expecting the Messiah are looking for another guy like Simon Bar Kokhba. And when he arrives, he will appear to be Israel's savior. And they will learn too late for many of them that he's fighting for the other side. Please take advantage of the audio versions of these programs. If you're looking for a more portable version of our daily news updates and our weekly program, we've got the Skywatch TV podcast available for you at the website. Get it, skywatchtv.com. Click the link in the top menu bar that says podcast. And you can meet the team from Skywatch TV at the Hear the Watchman conference coming up at the end of March, March 31st through April 2nd. Sharon, my, me, Josh Peck, Jake Rahutsky will be there. Other speakers include L.A. Marzulli, Russ Dizdar, Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer, John B. Wells, Dr. Michael Lake, Pastor Billy Crone, filmmaker Mike Norris, the director of Ar Amerigeddon, um, Josh Tolley, many others. More information online at hearthewatchman.com. Save $20 on your registration by using the promo code SKYWATCH. And thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is SKYWATCH TV.